Now I wanted to do a, a quick video about old school prison walls. Now, when I'm talking about old school, bearing in mind I only started going to prison around 2000. So old school for me um, was the older prisoners, you know, the, the 40 and 50 year olds that I got to mix with. Um, and when I was thinking back to the old school and who it was that gave me this kind of unwritten wall system to live by, I was trying to think through my cellmates to who it might have been. Um, and actually, it was coming from reading books in Portland. Now, going back to Portland briefly, uh, there are no tellies there, so you'd end up reading books um, and listening to the radio a lot. I buried myself in the library. Um, this is the first chance I really got into. I was only 18, and this is the first chance I really got into reading lots of books. Um, so I'd go and get out three books a week, and uh, I would find an author, and if I liked that author, then I would read every book they ever written. And uh, I did that across genres as well. I'd read comedy books and I'd read fantasy and, and, and fiction. And I ended up quite liking reading autobiographies. So I'd read as many autobiographies as I could um, of people that I thought had some sort of story to, to, to listen to. And uh, I got into reading The Craze and The Richardsons and, and all these other gangsters um, from the 60s and, and 50s and, and, and earlier back. Um, and they would give you some sort of insight into their life and... and what it was like in, in the prison in their days. And I think from reading those books at such an early age, that gave me a kind of a moral fibre and a moral thread um, to live by in prison and, and being a crook. So I took on a lot of those traits. Um, and I just wanted to share some of those with you today. So um, obviously the prison rules, if you're going to look at it in its true definition of the rules you've got to live by in the prison, those are set down on you by the staff. Um, obviously there's a few of them. Um, keep yourself tidy. Uh, don't kick off, do as you're told, um, you know, get behind your door, don't escape, <laughs> um, and just basically be a model prisoner. Now, living the staff, you're going to get one or two of them on each landing. Now, there's going to be 40 or 50 other prisoners that you've got to live with. So there's a set of rules you've got to live with in the community um, within being a prisoner. Now, obviously, I'll share some of these with you today now. Um first thing I always did was I always kept myself clean. Now, this is your home while you're in prison. You might only be there for a few weeks or a few months, but I was there for most of the time, uh, for, a, for a couple of years at a time. Um, you can end up being in a cell for six months, a year, sometimes more. Um, so that cell becomes your home. So take pride in it, clean your cell, keep it tidy, um, and don't live like a tramp, basically. Um, a lot of people would take the uh, attitude that it's, you know, it's the, it's the prison cell. And uh, they were just, you know, just some of the cells you go past are stinking. You can smell them outside the door. Um, and, you know, if you're going to be, again, living within this community in prison, you've got to, you know, hold yourself a bit of a higher standard. Um, there's always this old rule um, of don't rob your own. Now, in prison, these people aren't really your own. Um, but there is this still a rule of, uh, you know, you just don't steal. You don't be a thief. Um, people call them a pad thief. Um, now your pad obviously being your cell uh, if you get caught doing this um, you know the retribution is, is violent and swift no one wants a thief on the landing um, in that sense that they're robbing from other people on the landing there's always going to be instances of tobacco going missing um, other things going missing you know uh, bits and pieces out of the cell um, it's your responsibility in your cell to you know hide any valuables um, but you know sometimes you only get a couple of drawers and a little cupboard a lot of people keep their food locked away in their cell, but other people like to keep it out on the side. You'll see people with tons of toiletries on the on the top of their cupboard and things, because again, those sort of things are a bit of a status symbol. If you can afford nice to toiletries, you you sometimes you see people want to show them off, um, peacocking a little bit with uh, <laughs> with shower gels. Um, it is quite funny, but uh, yeah. Um, other rules. Don't get too friendly with the staff. Um, the last thing you want to be seen is is, is someone who's uh, constantly talking to the staff, or you know, you, you even see some people on you know some of the more enhanced landings and things. They'll be sitting there having a cup of tea with the staff, having a chat and things. And those are the kind of people that you always have suspicion about um, because you don't know how much of a which way is that information flowing, you know. And it's obviously this is a bit of a paradox. Um, so because you know, I used to, and I've talked about here getting friendly with the staff and, and getting them to bring items in for you. Um, but that's very different from being a you know a little worm and uh, just telling the staff everything they need to know. 
I, I will do another podcast at some point about the uh, you know the finer points of of getting staff to do what you want. Um, but yeah, the main rule is just to kind of you know be on speaking terms with them, but you know don't don't get seen being free, too friendly with them. It's just not not going to be uh, not going to be good for you. Now, when I was working down at the gym, um, it's a bit different because you're spending all day every day with them. Um, we got to know the gym staff very well, um, even to the point where you know one of the members of the staff was going through a divorce at the time, and they would sit there for hours talking to us, you know, unloading because you know we're spending eight hours a day with these people. Um, they do become like work colleagues. Um, you always have to remember, and they they will always remind you um, that uh, you you know you're a prisoner, and uh, you know the, the the lines weren't blurred too much. But in, in some sense, you know, we would sit there during a wait session sometimes and they'd be sitting there telling me all about their divorce and this and that and their terrible lives. <laughs> um, so it can become a bit blurred at some points. Um, but, uh, yeah, the uh, the main rule is just to try and keep it a bit of a divide. Now, I don't want to keep going always back to violence, but um, I always try and make sure that any fight you had, you have it behind doors or you have it in the showers, or you have it in a place where you know the staff aren't aren't going to see you. Um, all too often, you'll be on the landing and you'll see someone shouting across the landing that they're going to do this and that, and you know there's members of staff standing and everyone can hear it. You know, um, I would always within my friends and then within my little in my little crew, I would always try and defuse that situation and try and get in front of people. If I was in the gym and people were kicking off on the football field, I would always just sort of stand in between them and just say, listen, you know, do this in the showers, don't do this in front of the fucking staff, what's wrong with you? Um, and it, it, if you know, there's obviously ways and means in settling things in prison. Um, you can either do it verbally, um, if you're a good talker and you're able to shut people down, um, you know, with words, then, you know, you can avoid violence quite a lot. But a lot of people aren't good talkers, they're not good communicators, and the only way they can deal with things um, is with their fists. And you've got to remember a lot of people who end up in prison have worked their way through the care system. Um, a lot of them um, didn't go through school properly. Um, you'd be surprised about how many people in prison can't read and write. Uh, the vast majority can, um, but more than you'd see in everyday life um, of people who can't read and write uh, are in prison as well. So, um, yeah. One of the things that I found in prison is I didn't have great communication skills. Um, so whenever I had an altercation with someone, it would quickly result in uh, in fists. But it would always be behind your cell door. It would always be, uh, um, you know, in the showers where the staff couldn't see you. Even the gym members of staff used to tell, uh, the you know, the older school gym members of staff would tell you when you're down there, don't fight in the gym because you're going to get banned and the gym staff don't want to deal with it. Um, they would tell you, get behind the door and do it like a man. <laughs> Um, there was uh, anyone who's been to Exit and knows Trev uh, the gym screw down there and he was old school um, he'd call you a cunt to your face um, I remember we had a football session one time and he uh, you know he took the piss out of me because someone scored and uh, so as he was turning around I, I threw the ball so it just bounced off the back of his head it was quite lightly it wasn't even uh, I didn't boot the ball at him or anything um, he didn't get his hands on me right away but uh, later on, um, just as we were about to go back to the wing, he uh, he caught me unawares and uh, and punched me about six or seven times on the back of the head <laughs> for uh, for fucking around with him like that and and uh, you know humiliating him a little bit. So yeah, no, anyone who knows Trev from Exeter, he was uh, he was one of the good ones. But you know, if you're talking about old school, then he he defines it. Um. Now other rules. Let's think. I always used to do crimes that you'd be proud of. So what I mean by that is, you know, whatever you do ends up in the local paper. Um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, if you haven't fucked up too badly, you're not going to end up on the national papers. But um, even Crime Watch, local news, you know, local news outlets on social media now, um, I would always try and hold my head up so that, because my family were always going to find out as well. You know, I'd always only ever do a crime that I could hold my head up and walk into a pub and say, you know, this is what I've done, you know. Um, there's a lot of people out there doing very, very wrong crimes and um, they don't get a good time in prison. Again, I'll do another podcast on this at some point, but all these sex offenders and violent offences against women and and children and things like this, um, when they go into prison, 
you'd expect that part of their sentence is they, you know, they get a good idea every day from the other prisoners. But no, the minute they enter the court, they get separated um, and put into, you know, different cells, um, and they will never see the general population again. So these wrongings end up on, you know, a special wing. They call it a vulnerable prisoners wing. Um, because they know that uh, if they mix them with the general population, they're going to get the fucking head kicked in quickly. Um, there's always a bit of a prize if you uh, manage to get hold of a nonce or a, you know, a fucking sex offender. Because not all of them do try and uh, you know go onto the the fucking wrong and swing. Some of them will try and sneak in. Um, one of my first instances of of coming across this was in in uh, Portland prison. Um, it turned out that one of the Jamaicans on there was a was a rapist. Um, and he'd, he'd got seven years, but he he told everyone that he was in for um, robbery, which isn't unusual. A lot of Jamaicans are in there for robbery, um, drugs offences, things like that. Um, but this guy had lied about it, and I can't remember how his cellmate found out, um, but he did. Um, and uh, they jumped on him when he was in the showers, um, and they beat the fuck out of him. Uh, they just left him uh, a bloody mess on the floor. He was unconscious and, and beaten the shit out of and uh, it was only, you know, the member of staff at the end of the night that, uh, that that found him at the end of association. So, yeah, occasionally they do come in. The staff will occasionally tell you um, who these people are as well, so you can't hide on the wing. Um, we would always see it as a, as a member of the gym orderly staff when we're filling out the gym forms and filling out the health certificates and things. Um, you can see on the top of their paperwork um, what it is they're in for. And, uh, you know, some of these people, we'd have to, because we'd have to do the gym inductions for the fucking nonsense as well. And uh, the amount of time you wanted to drop a fucking weight on their fucking head is, it's unbelievable that, you know, these these beasts, um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an exercise in self-restraint just to not to plough through these. But, you know, smashing up one or two of them doesn't make a difference. There's another 40 or 50 of them on the wing. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, it wasn't worth losing my gym orderly job for um, at that point. So, yeah, always do crimes that you can be proud of, that you can hold your head up for, that you can ring your nan and say, listen, I'm in prison again, I've done this. Um, for me, it was always, I've kicked in the door of a drug dealer, I've punched someone in the mouth, you know, I've uh, I've, uh, I've tried I've tried burgling uh, an empty house. <laughs> There's, if you didn't, if you haven't listened to my diary podcast, um, it'll be, that's explained in there. Um, but, um, yeah, so these are just some of the rules uh, that you live by, and... Obviously, not only is it important that you live by these rules um, and just hold your head up in prison, um, but it's important that the people around you follow a, a good moral rule system as well, because they are you in you know in your reflection and your reputation in prison. So um, it's often you know it's often my job to make sure that others were following the same set of rules, because you know the the bar is pretty low in prison, um, you know as as. We're all there for doing something wrong. We're all there as criminals, as crooked. We've all wronged someone or something or society in some way. So, you know, as a as a standard, we're in prison. The bar's pretty low for our morals. Um, but you still have to follow some guidelines to make sure that you're not a scumbag, even within the prison system. So I'll give you an example on the resettlement wing. We were having to hold ourselves high, We, you know, you know, we couldn't do drugs. We're getting drug tested all the time. We had to look like we was being um, productive all the time. You couldn't just sit around on your bed. You had to be always reading a book or doing some education or even just hoovering something like that. Um, but we did have a little weights room on the on the wing. You know, a little weight session, a little weights uh, gym. Um, and a lot of people, obviously myself included, were, were you know training every day. Um, and one of the boys who had just come onto the wing. Um, from one of the other wings had uh, access to steroids and one of the lads who was on my team uh, a cockney um, he was trying to get me obviously to, to buy steroids from this lad so you know we could have them and uh, I did a bit of research on the guy and I found out that he was in for um, beating up his disabled niece now obviously when we're talking about you know the, the ladder of crime and you know the doing something that you're proud of beating up a disabled person is not a great not a great one to be holding your head up about so I instantly told my mate that we're not going to be doing any business with this guy and uh, and you know furthermore the guy's lucky he's even on the fucking wing now on that resettlement wing they did try to sneak sex offenders and and wrong down um, because it was a 
it was a last chance saloon for all, you know, um, even sex offenders and nonces get to go to open prisons at some point. Um, and that resettlement wing was a good little um, first step out for them. So they would try and sneak them down. And obviously, um, yeah, they'd quickly get found out and, and ushered back. Um, so obviously I had a lot going on at that point. I was getting out. I was earning money. Um, I was doing very well in prison. So I wasn't going to be the one beating up this guy um, and losing all of my uh, perks in life. But I wasn't certainly going to have anything to do with him. And I didn't want my pal to have anything to do with him. Um, so I made it quite vocal. I remember exactly how the conversation went. My friend said to me, "Is you know, you know, you've, you've you've got money. We can we can buy steroids off this guy and get get hench." And I just said to him, "Look, you know, I can't afford it." And my friend was like, "What do you mean you can't afford it? You know?" And uh, I said, "I'm not talking about cash. I said I'm talking about my morals. I can't afford to cash in my morals doing business with this guy um, just for the sake of some steroids." And Obviously, that was possibly something alien to him, you know, being a crook. He he dealt heroin um, and, you know, he probably didn't see any difference, you know, his day-to-day -day life is dealing death to people. Um, why not do business with someone who uh, beats up girls? But anyway, you know, not everyone holds themselves in the same way, uh, regard as you do. So, um, I mean, those are the basic guidelines that I would always stick myself to. The, the, and one weird one, um, I would always close my own prison door. Uh, I'd always kick my own door shut at the end of association, after lunch, um, any time really. And and this is more of a self-respect thing. Now, obviously, these people are keeping you incarcerated. They're keeping you there against your will. Um, you don't, uh, they, they, you know, the member of staff constantly has to come around at the end of every, you know, bang up period and just shut your door, make sure you're in your cell, count you off, that sort of thing. Um but I was to save myself the indignity of having them, you know, close my door and lock me away. Um, and other members of other inmates, you know, they used to keep the door open to the last minute. They're running around the landing and shit, doing stuff. And, you know, there's always be the same old inmate just needing to go and get hot water or something as everybody else is, is banged away. Um, but I would never do that. You know, I, I'm, I, you know, I wouldn't beg for those last few seconds and minutes of uh, my door being open. So, as soon as I'd finish, I'd always shut my own door and and bang myself away. Um, that was something that someone taught me quite early. Um, you know, don't give them the satisfaction of locking you up. You know, you shut yourself away. Take it back from them. Give yourself that bit of power back. Um, it's a very small victory, um, but it's uh, something that used to uh, um, keep you going because. Obviously, the main thing about prison is, is is a marathon. It's not a sprint. I found myself ridiculously patient now. You know, um, you almost get into like a meditatively, uh, meditative state of just being able to sit and wait for hours, days, weeks, months, years. Um, so yeah, anything that you could keep, to, anything that you could take back from them to keep your head strong and keep going. Um, was always a little victory. Now, I'm going to keep doing these little prison rules and prison occurrences and day-to-day -day prison stuff. But uh, again, like always, tell me in the comments what you'd like to see. Um, I know the people listening at the end of this video, uh, the, the the fans and the ones who uh, comment. I see all your comments and I, I try and uh, reply to as many as I can. All right, but um, yeah, I'm going to keep doing these videos. I'm going to try and get a couple of these out um, every week. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for listening. It is appreciated. And I, uh, yeah, I love all of you. See you soon. Cheers.